Um, we move on to the final public paper um, of today, 812 Rosewell to Auchindinny. Mr Oliver, thank you. Thanks, Provost. Council, this report is to update Council on the outcome of the public consultation and next steps to progress the upgrade of NCN 196 Rosewell to Auchindinny route. Following the report to June Council, an online public consultation was launched in August and closed in September. Consultation responses were analysed and presented to Cabinet for consideration and approval in November, with the option to use FlexiPave chosen to upgrade the, route, upgrade the route to provide a more accessible path for all users utilising grant funding. This report is provided for Council to note. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Oliver. Councillor Milligan. Yeah, provost. Um, I'm really perplexed with this because I'm going to say um, I'm looking at the minute and I circulated it prior to the, to, to the meeting um, when we discussed this back in June. Um, there was different various views given, no, for different parties, for different councillors who thought different uh, uh, um, outcomes for this would be, be, be beneficial. But the thing that's very, very clear to me is, is that at that meeting, we agreed that we would go to a consultation on that paper. I've circulated the minute and I've raised this with the uh, legal manager and the director and the chief executive. And effectively, um, all three are telling me that uh, even though the minute clearly states that we would note the feedback received regarding the, the surface in, we would approve a public consultation on retaining the, the status quo or surface in of the cycle path with a further report to be brought to Council. What we've got in front of us is a report for noting, not for decision, for noting. Can I say that drives a horse and cart through the democratic process that this Council's laid down? Never mind the decision, the democratic processes. You've effectively taken away the right of this Council, or trying to take away the right for this Council to take its own decisions. And you've taken it to where you thought you'd get the outcome that you wanted. And I'm sorry, that's really not acceptable. There's a complete loss of trust here and elected members to the officers here that are dealing with us. I've got to be frank about this. <coughs> I've raised this and I've raised it in, 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 in the proper manner because I'm very, very clear on what the decision was taken at the time, that we would go to consultation, we'd come back to council for a decision. The minute clearly shows that, any kind of playing about with it, well, you're still getting to see it. There's a report back here, just absolutely destroys the democratic processes. So I would like to move that we reject to note this paper and that we move that a full report be brought back with all the different options and the backgrounds and the results of the consultation to the next meeting of council. Thank you for that, um, Councillor Milligan. Um, Councillor Dimney. Yeah, thanks, Provost. Now, I'm going to contribute this time and, and not formally second, because given that uh, the Roswell Talk and Dinny pathway is in the Midlothian West Ward, it's a bit surprising and a bit galling as well that when you think someone's coming back to a council to be determined and to be signed off, it goes away to another committee and gets signed off. And then a report that's come back here is more or less, more or less saying, decision's been taken, rubber stamp, and on we go. And I think that's totally and utterly undemocratic. And I find it absolutely appalling that officers have actually acted in this way. I really do. And, it, it, you know, it, it, there's a pattern now appearing right through papers these days that we seem to be doing things and we're actually sometimes, as elected members, too late to have our democratic input. And that is not right and it's not proper. In all my years, I've never seen this sliding to the same extent. I don't know if we've all got, we've all got a, if it's all a result with officers of, of the COVID situation, but we have not got back to normal as we used to be, even though we may have differences uh, across parties, even though we may have differences across, across officers' interpretation of what they think the right thing is to do. The democratic process is that this council is the body where the decisions are and should be made. And I just want to second it and let's get the paper back on to the February meeting and get on with doing the right and proper thing. Thanks, Provost. Thank you. I'm going to take Councillor Parry and then Councillor Virgo. Thanks, Provost. 
I'm, I'm struck by, um, by Councillor Milligan and Councillor Imney's uh, comments about this being uh, undemocratic, and I wholly disagree with that because so this is a paper that went to Cabinet. Now, any paper that goes to Cabinet can be called in by PRS. That is the process. So at any point when that paper was circulated, it could have been called in to PRS. That's just a fact, and that's why PRS is there. Um, but similarly, the Cabinet papers, I mean, it, it wasn't even that Cabinet. It was, it was, it was quite some time ago. Um, at no point has anybody from the Labour Group got in touch with either myself or the Cabinet member to discuss um, the paper, and, and I'm sure everybody is aware in here that there's absolutely no problem with doing that at any point on any paper. In fact, we've done that today um, and been really flexible with that. So I do take umbrage with coming in the Council Chamber and criticising officers for carrying out a job that they've been uh, given the governance to do. I think that that's really inappropriate. Um, and what I also find is inappropriate is, is trying to continue this until February, because what we really need to do is get cracking and get the work done. And what we're not in the business of doing in this council, I would hope, is giving money back to the Scottish Government. Because how do you expect me to then go and lobby the Scottish Government and say, actually, we need more money at the same time as councillors are voting to give money back? Yep. It just that does not stack up. So this is a paper for noting. Uh, I'm happy to note it um, and won't be uh, voting to, to do anything otherwise with it. Thank you. I'm going to take Councillor Virgo, then Councillor Milligan, then Councillor Smeal. Thank you. Thanks, Provost. Um, I mean, it's a, it's a lot of rhetoric, a lot of fiery rhetoric around a footpath, um, ironic, um, which, which baffles me a little bit in the context of everything else uh, in papers. Oh, thank you. Um, uh, in the context of everything else that we have to deal with as a council, um, I, I think what I'd like some clarity on, perhaps from the monitoring officer. Um, is you said you've had advice from the monitoring officer that this is okay. Is your position that he's wrong? Yes. Uh, and perhaps could you just clarify uh, whether what, what the legal position is, uh, Mr. Turpey? Thank you for that, um, Councillor Virgo. I think that would be helpful, um, Mr. Turpey. Thank you, Chair. The decision from 27th June 2023 was that the Council approved a public consultation on retaining the status quo or surfacing of the, council, of the cycle path with a further report to Council on, in August 2023. This minute was approved at the full Council in August 2023. The minute as approved does not specifically retain the final decision to the Council. The webcast has also been reviewed and there is no specific reference during the discussion to the report being brought back to the Council for decision making. As per the scheme of administration and standing orders, it is the remit of the Cabinet to determine decisions such as these that has also been standard custom practice within the Council and the outcome of the consultation was duly presented to Cabinet at its meeting on 28 November 2023. It is therefore the government's position that the wording of the minute from 27th June does not specifically retain the decision making to, cap to, to the Council, but rather that the outcome will be reported to Council and therefore the reference to Cabinet was competent. Thank you for that, Mr. Turpey. Um, Councillor Smale and then Councillor Milligan. Yes, I think uh, if one reads that, it is perhaps ambiguous at best, but I would have read it as meaning that the Council will have the final decision on the expenditure of £550,000, which has not come to this Council, but has been determined at Cabinet. Councillor Milligan. Yeah, Provost, <coughs> I, I take um, the point that the Council leader makes about the calling procedure. The reality is here, the minute I think is very clear that she'll come back to Council. The Council leader is also very clear that I was off during that period of time dealing with a family uh, uh, um, bereavement and therefore I wasn't here to call this in. Uh, um, however, I really need to make clear here that part of the debate, I'm not arguing the decision, I'm not arguing, I'm arguing the actual fact that we have a decision here. What we decided was that this report would come back to Council and we can have the play in words that they want to play with here. The quite frankly is there will be a complete loss of trust here today if what we are forced to do here is to deal with this report and the line it's in, we will never trust that another report coming before going to consultation and going out will want the decisions taken there and then. And if this had to go to Cabinet, as the, the, the monitoring officer states, why did it come to Council in the first place? Thank you. 
If that's, if that's the course for it, how did it come here in the first place? It came here in the first place because this is where it should come in. Uh, and quite frankly, this is where the decision should be made. Councillor Alexander. I do hear what Councillor Milligan has said, but having said that, the democratic process has been uh, gone through, so it has gone to Council, and it, um, PRS did have the opportunity to, um, to go against it when it came to PRS. And the, council, the councillor for that area, I think, was um, available to be there to speak to it. Um, so I think it has gone through the dem democratic process properly, and I am happy to second it if Councillor Parry is um, putting it forward. Um, so, yes, I I'm happy to second it if it's been put forward. Thank you for that, Councillor Alexander. If I could just, just ask if we just all pause a wee bit, just take a wee bit of breath and, and not be muttering um, at each other um, across the, the chamber. Thank you. Um, Councillor Milligan. Yeah, Provost, I, I would just like to be clear. I'm, I'm unaware of this report being anywhere near PRS at all. If, if, if I'm wrong, somebody can come in and tell me. No, I, I, and I would just like to say we're heading down a slippery slope here if we think this is democratic. I think what Councillor Alexander meant was it went to cab Cabinet, and I think she said Council there by mistake. It could have been called in by PRS. Absolutely appreciate you weren't here, but there are, um, you know, you do have a deputy um, who could have called it in um, when you were when you were absent. I think was the the point that was was being made. Councillor Virgo. Thanks, Provost. Um, I, I'm genuinely not dismissing Councillor Milligan's concerns. Um, you know, I, and I think there's something to be looked at. But he also said kind of do the right thing, and I think the right thing is to get this done. Um, as, I, I do think he also said, you know, he has no issue with the actual, you know, outcome of the, the Cabinet report, just the way it was, it was or the, the way the process appears to have happened. Um, so I just wonder whether there's, there's a middle ground of, of let's get this done for the people of Middle Lothian, improve the accessibility of this walk and, and, and the walkway, a uh, shared use pathway, apologies. Um, and and, and poss I don't know, is, is it something that maybe standing orders can look at or maybe that, you know, we have a little review, something, a cross-party group or something to look at um, this process or, or how this happened and just make sure that we're all crystal clear uh, on, on how things should happen and how and, and, and maybe get it written down somewhere for clarity or something like that. Um, I'm not quite at the point uh, of losing trust in officers uh, over how this has happened. Um, I, I, I personally feel that's maybe overstating it and, and uh, I, th I think ascribing uh, sort of specious intent uh, to officers, and I'm not, I, I don't believe that. Um, so I don't know whether that's a middle ground, whether we, we, we note this, have it done, but um, in, with some sort of amendment that collectively, collegiately, uh, we, we just review what's happened here uh, and see if there's any lessons that can be learnt. I don't know whether that's a yeah. acceptable middle ground. Yeah, can um, somebody remind me, is this, the standing orders cross-party group still going? Is that, so that is something that could be um, discussed at the cross-party working group. I'm going to take Councillor Smale and then uh, Councillor Cassidy. I think we should do that as a minimum. Um, just to fortify uh, Councillor Milligan's case, we also have in the minute, uh, 818, the final s uh, sentence of the uh, outline and summary says, the chief officer place advised you we would blah, 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 review the materials used and bring back costs in relation to materials and salt. The costs and expenditure decision has not been brought back to the council. This is a natural reading of the words. Uh, we can't go on and have uh, uh, this happening such that expenditure occurs in the uh, outside the council, which is the council is led naturally to expect that it will have a chance to review. 
Thank you. Um, Councillor Cassidy. Yeah, thank you, Chair. I, I, I'm a bit baffled here by some of the language being used in the lack the loss of trust in officers. This is something that's for the greater good in our community. This is something that we're not having to put our hand in our pocket for. This is something that will greatly benefit that walkway. So I, am, I have to put on record that I'm baffled by the attitude here and the, this. Sometimes you've just got to trust the decisions of officers. These people are professionals. Uh, Councillor Milligan. Yeah, um, I'm not going to get into whether I agree with, with the yeses or no, but I'll be quite candid about it. I think it benefits the walkway, and neither did the majority of the people who responded to the consultation. But then again, we're not getting to discuss that here. And, and that's the problem. That is the absolute problem. We're not getting to discuss whether the consultation was done in such a way that it leaned towards getting the decision that was wanted. It doesn't tell us whether the consultation can adequately identify who consulted and who responded, where they came from, because, quite frankly, it also doesn't tell you that you could respond to the consultation several times, because there was nothing to stop you being able to enter multiple times. You didn't have to put down your address. You didn't have to put down if you're a Midlothian resident in any way at all. So we'll not get to discuss that today because it's a done deal, and as simple as that. It is, quite frankly, as important to me as this, that our report came to Council, we agreed to go into a consultation, and in the spirit and everything that was agreed, that report would have came back here for debate and discussion. Now, at that stage, if you have that debate and discussion, there's a vote taken, you go with the majority. But what we have here, effectively, is a done deal, and I, I just simply don't think it's good enough. Okay, so what we have is we have a paper for noting and Councillor Milligan and Councillor Imre have um, put in an amendment. And what was the, could you just clarify your amendment for me, please, um, Councillor Milligan? That Council doesn't agree to continue with this and that it's conti to continue with the work and that the decision is continued to the next meeting of Council where a full report and all options are brought back and the full results of the consultation and the way the consultation was carried out are brought back for members so that we can have a, a clear and, a, a, and informed debate on what's the best for this. Thank you. Council Leader. Uh, thanks, Provost. I, I just wanted to, um, to reflect on the point about the, the consultation. I do think that um, uh, it would be a good thing for the Council to set up a consultation hub uh, whether that be online so that people can see what consultations there's been and then they're being closed. However, can I uh, also, um, while I've got the mic, just uh, ask Mr Turpe if that amendment would be competent given that a decision was recently made um, at Cabinet? Thank you, Mr Turpe. I think you're going to consult your, your, uh, your book, so I, in standing orders, I'll give you a minute to do that. No, Chair, just get the exact wording from Standing Order 12.1, which would allow any decision of Cabinet or Committee to be co effectively called in by the Council. Um, the Council can overturn that decision uh, at the meeting, so Standing Order 12.1 would allow Councillor Milligan's motion to go ahead. Thank you for that. So, uh, Councillor Smale. Uh, just a point of clarification, there was a suggestion that if we don't make, uh, it'll just allow this to pass now, that we'll lose funding from SUS Trans, etc., uh, the 369 package. If I read correctly, 4.1 says we have until the end of the financial year, which I believe is March the 31st, so that isn't yet a factor, but clearly we have to get on with this decision and do it in a quality way. Thank you for that point. Um, Councillor Smell, if we could just get clarification um, from... Mr. Oliver, that that is the case. Uh, I confirm that's the case, Provost. Okay, so again, Mr. Trippy, um, just for um, clarity, so we're crystal clear about what we're voting for. We're going to take the amendment um, from Councillor Milligan and Councillor Imre. Is that correct? I think, given it was made first, it would be the motion, Chair. 
motions that we do not consider the council does not note the report today but uh, suspends the decision and calls for a future report to the February meeting with an amendment uh, by I think the leader and seconded by Councillor Alexander that the council simply note the report if that's correct then it normally be the, the, Mr Councillor Milligan made his motion first he, he has a motion and the council leader has the amendment Thank you. And the situation about the cross-party group on standing orders, was that, did that come in Councillor Parry's? I think it was Councillor Smell, but I think it was a, a good suggestion. And if we could take that part in and the consultation part to standing orders working group, I think that would be helpful. I, I concur with that. I don't think it's necessarily part of the motion today. Sorry again, uh, Mr. Turpey, just to just to confirm, 12.1 is the standing order um, that we are that we are doing this because it was a decision by cabinet. Uh, yes, dear. I also noticed that Councillor Virgo is, I think, who did also make a, a compromise amendment, is, is waiting to speak. Councillor Virgo. Apologies. Uh, yes, I, I believe it was a, a suggestion of perhaps a, a middle ground, uh, as I find myself uh, in the centre here, unusually, um, that perhaps as an amendment to the uh, motion, the, no, the, the, I very much lost track, essentially what's in here, amendment to the recommendations that we also go away and do a review with the, stand, with the cross party standing orders group, look at the situation, see if there's any lessons that can be learnt to perhaps try and rebuild some of this trust, um, or lost trust. Um, but in the interests uh, of, uh, you know, Middle Lothian, we just, we note this and we get the job done. Mr. Chirpy. Chief Minister, I suggest, and again, this is matters entirely to my hands, it's the, the four elected members who made the motion and amendment is perhaps that they can both accept that coming in as an addition to their positions. So it's not that... Provost, we, we, we simply will not be supporting any or will not amend anything. This is a clear decision that this was to come back to Council. It's in black and white and that's your position that we take on that and that's how we'll be voting. This is a slippery slope if we allow this to move. It's quite simple it allows officers to go where they want, where they think they'll get the best results. Okay, I think you've made your position quite clear then. Um, and sorry, one final question for you, Mr. Trippy. We don't have to suspend standing orders for this. It is 12.1, and so we can go ahead with that. It, it is, Chair. I take it there's been no seconder for Mr. Virgo, Councillor Virgo's middle ground amendment. Councillor Parry. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to, um, to agree with Councillor Virgo in the spirit of just moving this on. We need to get this work done. And to be blunt about it, uh, the, what, where the Labour group are coming from um, is without saying it, you're saying that you would overturn the decision anyway. So it seems like you've kind of made up your mind on the outcome. So, um, and that you don't want the... And that you, it sounds like you, you don't agree with doing the path in this way and handing back the money. So it seems a bit pointless anyway. So let's just move on, get the path done. It's already been agreed at Cabinet. You had ample opportunity to call in to PRS. It doesn't have to be just you. So let's just get on and do it and deal with other parts as we go. Right, Councillor Milligan, and then I'd like to go to the vote. Yeah, quite frankly, this is about the democratic processes. A report came to this Council, irrespective of what officers are now telling us, that Cabinet was the right place to go. A report came to this Council. There was differences of opinion there. I can tell you right now, had we been informed that it would not be coming back to this council for approval, we would have at that stage moved a motion against this for myself. There are other members of my group who might not support that. I don't know wh what, what they feel with that, but at that time, that's where I would have been, because I didn't think it's best use of public money. However, that's my view, no this Labour group's view, because we have not discussed this, we discussed going to consultation and what should be in the consultation. We fully expected that at that would then come back to this council for decision. And at that stage, we would have looked at the results, we would have discussed with officers, we would have had internal discussions, and we would have voted whatever way we had accepted to vote with. But this is about the democratic process, and only the democratic process. 
Right, we're going to move to... Sorry, Councillor Virgo. Apologies again uh, for prolonging this unnecessarily. Um, but I with the greatest of respect, you are, tell you are saying that the monitoring officer is wrong. Okay. Right. So we have the, the motion is from Councillor Milligan, um, seconded by Councillor Imray. We have the amendment from Councillor Parry, which is the recommendations in the paper, plus um, the suggestion from Councillor Virgo that it goes to the cross-party group. But no, right, Mr Turpey. No, that's great so far, but I don't think Councillor Alexander, who seconded the motion, the amendment in the first place, has agreed to, to that being added to it, just to get, to get that. Thank you. Right, and so Councillor Alexander is happy with that. So, Mr Chip, I'm going to take the, the motion first of all. Yep. So, the motion um, from Councillor Milligan and seconded by Councillor Imray. All those in favour, please show your hands. And those against? That's nine votes for the motion and nine votes for the amendment, Chair. In these circumstances, you would have a casting vote. And so, therefore, my casting vote is for the amendment.